On today's video, we'll be working on a microwave that is no longer operating. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your microwave plugged into a power source. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check the breaker and we see the breaker is not tripped. At this point, we still want to make sure that we do have power coming out of that outlet. And there's three different options that you can take in diagnosing to see if you have uh, power coming out of the outlet. This is a non-contact voltage detector and basically the way it works is you press the button and you hold and if it starts to beep that is giving you a reading that you do have power coming out of the outlet. Some have a button some don't so depending on the model uh, it will vary but this will give you an indication if you have power and you see we do have power. This is an outlet tester and you can see just the graph, open ground, open neutral, open hot. The indicator lights on the bottom will give you a reading and depending on the reading, uh, you'll just diagnose with what coincides with the diagram. So we're gonna plug it in. We're looking for the two right lights to light up. That will be correct. Um, there's no electrical issues. So we see here that we have no electrical wiring issues and the wiring is correct. If you have a multimeter, you can always check the voltage coming out of the outlet. And we need a reading of 120, which we're at 123. So we know at this point, the outlet is not the issue. Now, before working on the microwave, make sure that you do unplug the microwave because we're going to open up this panel and you don't want anything shocking you or you don't want to damage um, anything on the microwave. On top of the microwave where the vent is, you'll have one and on the side you have two screws. Just go ahead and remove those screws so that we can remove this vent cover. Once you remove the two screws, go ahead and pull it out. Now, if you have an old microwave, you may have to use a little bit of effort because a lot of times there's a lot of grease buildup and it almost acts like a glue or the residue just bonds it. So you may have to pull it out with some force. Next, we're going to need access to the fuse, so we're going to have to remove these two screws to remove this cover. Once you remove the cover, go ahead and remove the fuse. You tap your leads on the ohm setting, you should get a reading of zero. Now if I untap my lines, that will indicate a break in the line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two leads and I'm going to tap the sides of the fuse and I put it on the sound setting just because I'm one hand is I'm using with the video so you can hear it. But when I tap the sides, if I don't get any noise, then I know that the fuse is the problem. So right now I'm tapping the fuse and I do not have any resistance. The top is my bad fuse and the bottom is my new fuse. And you can hear that I do have uh, continuity. Now we're going to take the good fuse and we're going to put it in and just make sure it's nice and snug in there. And then we'll assemble everything back together, plug the microwave back in and then test it. Now we're going to plug the microwave in and you can see that it did start up. If this video was informational or if it was a help in any way, please subscribe.